Hey guys, this is Jeremy, and with the new Star Wars solo movie that is out now, it's one of those uh, nicely packaged movies that's supposed to be out that just hit theaters. I wanted to do a Star Wars video for you. The top nine movies in order of what I think is absolutely the best videos. Now I'm gonna to try to get this done in seven minutes, so we gotta really go quickly through this. Here's the list of all of the videos, at least as far as how much money they made. Surprisingly, I didn't think that this would be the order of what they were like. So let me start at the bottom at number nine, the worst of all the movies. This may not surprise you, but the movie that I put at the bottom of my list is The Phantom Menace. It's actually one of the topper grossing videos of the Star Wars franchise. It kind of had a little help of no Star Wars for a really long time, and then we're gonna give you something, and then it was complete garbage. I'll be honest, the whole uh, Jar Jar thing was really annoying, but even him as a character, you know what, whatever. That's fine, I will endure Jar Jar, but the animation, the, the desire to go from a super wonderful, beautiful world to the grunginess that was the old animation style with Star Wars, it just didn't connect. I felt like they tried to make that transition way too quickly and everything was just supposed to be so nicely polished because we had such great graphics that it almost left me so wanting to have more and it wasn't a good movie. The eighth movie on my list is The Attack of the Clones. Now, again, this is kind of following a little progression here of the prequels, didn't do so hot. The, the original trilogy, gonna be awesome. The last trilogy that's still getting created, it's pretty good, but still a lot left to be desired. Attack of the Clones, if I had to best put it, I think that they were trying to get a narrative that would fit really nicely with why things crashed and burned. And again, it's that dystopian, beautiful place that they create the clones and all the secrecy that happens. And the narrative in and of itself wasn't necessarily like super terrible. We had Darth Maul in, in The Phantom Menace, which was great, but the pod racing and all that stuff garbage. This one, I feel like this the, the disconnect the, the lack of actual like combat and then all the scheming stuff just wasn't portrayed really well. And I think that they had a really great opportunity to do something really well with this, but they, they left a lot to be desired. They, they left a lot of people kind of wondering what is happening and why, why should I care? For number seven, I'm gonna be a little controversial. It's not going to be Revenge of the Sith. For me, it's The Last Jedi. Um, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this, but the, the approach of where the narrative is going feels like they are intentionally spending way too much time trying to kill off the previous main characters to make this bad guy and this hero be larger than life. And they spent so much time dedicated to that, that they've lost the Star Wars narrative in general. Like, where do you go? Like, what's happening in the universe? I have no idea. With the original trilogy, you understood a little bit about what's happening, the Empire's crumbling. Even with the, the prequels, you knew where things were headed. And with this, it's like, hey, we're gonna invent some more Star Wars stuff that literally never has been discussed ever. And then we're gonna kinda just like make this bad guy that we kill real easy and another hero dies. And basically all we're left with is the new cast and Leia, which obviously they can't do much with. It, I was I was actually disappointed with this movie. I was frustrated by it. So that's my number seven. Number six is Revenge of the Sith, where they have a lot of great lightsaber duels. They had all the Jedi coming together. Honestly, that's what made it for me. Um, I, the conversation about going from all the old stuff or the new stuff to the old stuff and making that transition, they did okay. I feel like they could have done better with it, um, but the actual lore kind of was sort of there and you could probably add more to it if you wanted to. Uh, but the, the uh, fact of the dark side coming in and taking over and just just taking the light side, I think that was a good storyline that happened really, really well. Um, again, I felt like there was this conflict of trying to make that transition from bright and shiny to grungy and dark. And I think the movie actually captured that a lot, especially like with the, 
the terrible, terribly memed at least, I don't know if it's necessarily a terrible fight scene between Obi-Wan and Anakin, but it was good. I will say this is kind of the tipping point for me of everything before that was tragically left wanting a lot. And then from here on, it's like, okay, this is the tipping point of these are the really good videos. I like this. So I'm going to do something that other people may hate. This probably is going to just be one big uh, troll fest as far as Star Wars. But the next item on my list is The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens had this anticipation and this hype of where are we going next. Now I will say, I'll be honest, I read all the canon books and knew the lore of what's supposed to happen after Star Wars. Um, about where they're going to take things and then they ignored all that. I'm a little frustrated by that, I'll be honest, because they had some really good stuff that they could have taken from, really kind of fed into all the Star Wars fanboys like myself and really encouraged that piece of it. I don't think that they left all the way. Um, in fact, I think that they have the opportunity to kind of redeem themselves a little bit. But I will say that I appreciate the fact that they are continuing to move forward with this narrative of the heroes with the force as opposed to they could have gone like the Clone Wars route the, the animated series that they did where it really lacked a lot of the Jedi pieces of it because it has a really good narrative to it um, and I think that they did a lot of world building in this that allowed for that ability to see what happens when um, things go well but we I think the biggest disappointment is there's this new order that comes in. Where did they come from? Why are they in power now? Why is it that the empire didn't try to reclaim everything that was happening? And why is the new is the new republic just incompetent that they let the world fail so badly, allowing this new comp? They just didn't explain it. Like their world building for the characters themselves, beautiful. I like that. But then the world building for like the entire universe, I think that they kind of left behind. And that's actually a little bit frustrating, so I would like to see that better. So that leaves for me on my list the original trilogy and Rogue One. I am going to say I'm going to put Rogue One at number four. I think that Rogue One was superb. I think that they played off of the animated series. They played off of where it's supposed to end up. That ending was ridiculous. Ridiculous. I loved the entire container of from beginning to end. You you knew what was going to happen. You knew they were going to die because they were never mentioned later in the book unless like they do a comic book kind of thing. But the the fact that they told the story so well and so dramatically was really, really enticing. In fact, of all the films since the original trilogy, this is absolutely the best one that they've done. I hope that they do more like this because... The newest trilogy that they're releasing doesn't even compare, in my mind, to what they did with Rogue One. So for me, that is absolutely deserving of this place. So number three is A New Hope. I loved A New Hope. I loved how they set up the world. I love how they established there's this thing called the Force, and then there's this tension against uh, Darth Vader, and then the battle between Obi-Wan versus... Uh, Darth Vader and then you see the the tunnel trench at the Death Star blowing it up amazing series um, just really kind of diving in people ask where you should you start as far as Star Wars I'm okay with the chronological version I myself like to just go from the way that they released it um, but I haven't tried to do the, the chronological way but to have A New Hope as your first exposure to Star Wars is a really good thing it's actually building this entire narrative that I don't know, I think they try to do with Phantom Menace, um, but this actually does a really, really good job of here's the universe and here's everything that you can kind of expect. It's similar and yet not the same as what we know outside of the movie. So this is a typical one. I know a lot of people, myself included, love The Empire Strikes Back. At the same time, I love Return of the Jedi so much. Um, the Ewoks, the starships, the fighting on the ground, the units, um, the ATSTs, the Wookiees, oh my, or the Ewoks, oh my goodness, I love it. And then you have the Empire Strikes Back where the ATATs come in, just blow things up. You see the bounty hunters, you get Jabba and all that stuff. I'll be honest, it's a slim margin. I could easily go back and forth just depending on my mood for this. But I'm going to put number two as 
the Empire Strikes Back. Um, I And that's not a diss to it by any means because it's so close. Uh, but I love the fact that they have that just scary empire. They've taken control and the Rebel Alliance is on its heels. We don't know what to do. We need to get away. And it's really the last hope of Luke trying to help save them. So I love that piece of it, that narrative. And so I'm going to put them at number two. So that leaves us with one more video, The Return of the Jedi. It's a great movie. It has that ending that's so good that had they not made more videos, which it's a little bit of a cash grab. It's a little bit of a wanting to continue to tell the storyline, but I don't know if they necessarily had the reason to. And this is coming from a Star Wars fanboy, I realize that. But I think that the way that this one ended was just so good. They they tied everything up. The good guys won versus the evil that was just absolutely dominating them. I think I think that that's going to probably be really hard to beat. This trilogy is going to end soon, and we got a solo movie that has fair reviews, not great, not blow your socks off reviews. It's gonna be hard to beat that original trilogy and not even just because that's what warmed our hearts but because it was just done so well the narrative that George Lucas did the world building and the interactions the development of those characters was just so well done and I think that the the video producers have a lot to do to be able to develop that so I'd like to hear how do you disagree because you probably do, but tell me why you disagree. What is it about those movies that you would change the order of them? And are you gonna go see the new Star Wars solo movie? Is that something that you wanna see? I'd love to hear. Leave your comments below and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.